It is Tuesday night. It is 8 o'clock. Do you know where DJ's at? I know where I'm at. I'm here with you. And also, I wanted to make sure that we were live, so I had to give a second or two here. Gotta love technology. Sometimes it works great. Sometimes it's like a little off. And I want to thank you all for tuning in for another DJ roundtable here. We have some great DJs. We have a DJ, unfortunately, who's out under the weather. We have some DJs who are unfortunately not here, but we do have a DJ that is back from their vacation. Jeff survived his vacation on the boat. He caught some fish, I hope, maybe, you know, off a cruise ship, you know, dropping a line. No, no, no fish up. They don't like that, huh? <laughs> uh, DJ Brantley, he is here. Uh, Matt, DJ Salsa is here. Uh, Dwayne is here. And Jordan is here because his other half is not feeling well. We wish that she feels much better soon. And also that uh, we wish that you out there are having fun, enjoying yourselves. If you are... Also in the chat, which I see you cool thing in the chat. Uh, if you are in the chat, make sure that you ask your questions. We'll get the answers as quickly as we possibly can. And we thank you for being here on Twitch. If you're not watching us on Twitch, you're watching us on YouTube. We are live at 8 p.m. on Tuesday night, Central Time on good old Twitch. You, you can always go over to Twitch and find us. As well as if you're watching on YouTube, do me a favor. Make sure you click that like button, the subscribe button, and the bell icon to make sure you know when new uploads come up. I try to upload on Mondays at noon, so that way it gives you some time to watch it. And if you're listening to this as a podcast and driving around, put it down below in the chat on YouTube when you get a chance to. Just go back and say, hey, I listen to this as a podcast or I listen on the podcast. Um, yeah, I want to hear what you guys are doing and also what you're thinking. Also, one other thing also, if you can help me help me out and help everyone else out here, make sure you go to everyone's social media. They have all the links are down below for the YouTube and how sweet it is. Their Instagram is down there. So show some love, uh, show some love to them. Go over to their Instagram, make sure you go on their Instagram and you know, like their page. Follow their page. They have a lot of great information over there. Show both Jordan and Taylor um, lots of friendship and love over there. And do me another favor. DJ Brentley is still out looking for ad you know information, addresses, basically. You could, you could direct message him for your address. Send you a lovely sticker. Once so oh, Dwayne's got his stickers. Uh, and Brentley's got some. Oh, maybe I have to drive over by Brentley because Brent Brentley is much closer right now. He is he escaped the land of cheese and came down to the land of Lincoln for a little bit. Oh yeah. So stickers are at <laughs> Beat Kitchen, uh the Map Room, a few other bars we went to last night, and the L L Tavern, where uh Gacy and Dahmer met some of their friends. Now, granted, it is my favorite dive bar in the city of Chicago. They have not done a thing to this bar since, like, it was, like, post-prohibition. The bar is falling apart. There's not even a lock on the bath any of the bathroom doors, guys or girls. It's just gross. But it's my favorite dive. Had to stop in there last night. But is it as bad as the troughs at your Wrigley Field? Because like, you're a Cubs fan, so... No. Uh, comparatively speaking, you could probably drink out of the trough at Wrigley Field compared to going to the LNL. There you Hands go. Down. So <laughs> take, take your chances there. Roll the dice. Go and say hi to DJ Brentley if you're in the area. <laughs> but do me a favor. Again, if you have one of his stickers, I know Dwayne's got one. Make sure you take a picture of it with it on something, where at somewhere, on something, whatever. Put the hashtag on there to allow Brentley to get it. Make sure you tag him on Instagram and say, hey, I have one of your stickers. And I'm here. There you go. Look at that. He's got he's got it on his phone already. And I'm sure that's going to go up on Instagram there. So make sure you follow him on his Instagram. Uh, again, all the links are down below for everyone. So please make sure. Tommy's here tonight. He escaped. Uh, last week was a test. This week he's out of the test. Of course, he still has more studying to do so before, guys, uh, before summer. Looks like, looks like the kind of bar you definitely order a PBR at. No, you. I, I think would that be would that be wouldn't it be an old style? I think that'd be an old style bar, wouldn't it? Shout out, my lord! It, 
<laughs> well, for starters, you have to have the Lord, especially if you don't know, you're bringing friends who have never had it. Uh, but now it really wouldn't matter because living in La Crosse, uh, City Brewing of La Crosse, Wisconsin is brewing both PBR and Old Style for the Midwest. So the beers are pretty much identical no matter what you're doing. Crappiest bar in the USA, according to Google. <laughs> oh, yeah. Creepiest bar in the USA. <laughs> it it uh, probably I'd... qualifies as both. I would probably say Lion's Head is creepier because Lion's Head is supposedly haunted. So I would say Lion's Head's creepier. It has a, has a it's an English bar. It's kind of cool, but it's kind of a, uh, has a creepy vibe to it. So if you're looking at some places to go to in Chicagoland, Lion's Head is one of the places. And also, I'm going to toot the uh, horn again for Chicago. They have in the Tribune, um, I think, I think it's a Tribune, if I remember correctly. Uh, they have a pizza bell going on for all the different pizza places. Uh, Pequod's is on there. There's some great pizza places on there. Uh, there's some places I thought would be much higher than what it was, like Home Run Inn and a few others. But if you ever have questions on pizza, hit me up on Instagram. I will send you to some great Chicago pizza places. And speaking of some great people here, again, I have Jordan here, who's just across the board, Indiana. Tommy, who's uh, here as well, who is a Chicagoan. Fellow White Sox fan, you know the White Sox have, you know, not do well since uh, opening day they lost and everything like that. But we're still hopeful. We're still I, uh, might be another tough season. I don't know. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. It's still it's still early, so we'll see. I know uh, Tracy and Brentley were happy that uh, you know opening day for uh, for Wrigleyville they were happy. You know they won, so I can't fault them for that. But uh, I can still say that Sox are better. <laughs> yeah. Don't love. Alan Eller earned his. Because John Wayne Gacy and Jeffrey Dahmer used to visit there all the time. Yeah, that's how creepy that place is. Yeah, that uh, that, that takes the cake. Here's yeah. a fun here's a and fun yeah, fact for me. John Wayne Gacy's house is not far from my parents' house, probably fifteen minutes. But our my first my second apartment I lived in when I was a child. Uh, when my dad first started working for the city of Chicago. Um, was literally five minutes from there, and Tracy works three minutes from old John Wayne Gacy house, which was torn down years ago, and another house was built up there. They have a different address and everything that than the original address. And another fun fact is that that house is like a half a block block away from the city of Chicago. It's actually unincorporated Nord Park um, Township. It's unincorporated Cook County. It's a half a block away also from a Chicago fire station right there on Cumberland Avenue. So um, it's a very, very, very uh, unique uh, area. Uh, lots of city workers and lots of great families in there. And then you have this monster living there. So it's kind of it's kind of like you like turn your head like, hmm, is there anyone else like that there? Hopefully not. Uh, hopefully anyone bad like that is caught and they spend their time in, in jail. With that said, let's go on with some fun things tonight. Uh, Jeff did send me a thing tonight. Which uh, I'm 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 thinking it's a it's a uh, it's kind of a um, April Fool's joke that uh, an AI software to read the crowd's faces to help you uh, decide what songs you're going to pick, and uh, I want want Jeff to <laughs> to talk about really quickly. Uh, Jeff, is a fact or fiction? <laughs> um well it, it's it's pretty much fiction yeah <laughs> so i was trying to i was trying to see if matt would fall for it but uh he, he did not <laughs> it was it was pretty it was pretty good i was looking at reading it i was like oh this is pretty interesting this is true uh which i don't think it would work very well but it was a basically article saying that ai you hook a camera up to your uh, computer and with ai software um through uh virtual dj you can read the crowd and see what song to play next, depending on the person's faces in the crowd, which I think we're way far away from there. And that's goes to my first question of the night here, uh, which, you know, again, we all had gigs uh, lately or we had gigs within the past, you know, few months. And as always, I try to watch people's videos and look at social media and stuff with pictures and everything. But let me ask you guys this. I'm going to pose a question for you. Let's say you're talking to a client and they, in their wisdom or in the wisdom of the facility, have you stuck 
in a corner away from the dance floor. And that is always where they stick the DJ at. The DJ always goes into this corner here, this back corner here. We put five or six tables in front. We had the dance floor way over there. Uh, what would you think that, uh, what would you think that is? Would you, would you, what would you, how would you overcome that if people were looking at you and going, Hey, uh, you're supposed to be there in the corner. Cause we've run into that where your setup ad is not ideal. So if you walk into a situation where you're not in an ideal situation, an ideal set, uh, I could talk right. Uh, ideal set where you're at, where would you want to be moved to? Would you t work with the facility or talk to the couple or would you just say, Hey, this is where the couple wants me. That's it. That's it. So I'm going to start with uh, Jeff on this one. If you were set off to the corner, off to the side, you know, away from the dance floor, not on the dance floor. How do you overcome that? How do you deal with a facility or a couple who wants that and wants a different feel? Matt? Uh, well, you know, there's not a whole lot you can do about that. I recently had a barn wedding uh, that uh, I, I was set, not where I was uh, planning to be when I met with the bride and groom. Uh, when I got there in the in the day of, uh, they told me, yeah, you need to set up over there because we got to put extra tables here. Uh, we have more people coming than we thought. So it kind of put a, uh, a damper on where I was going to be. Um, uh, one way around that that I did is when I had time to talk and not play music, in other words, you know, just talking to people, I would grab the mic and go out onto or in, into the area uh kind of the dance floor it's kind of where they got married but um you know just go out there and talk and, and grab attention you know with uh using the microphone doing that um and then they followed me back or you know with their eyes followed me back to uh to the dj booth and i popped a song on and so it kind of gave them that uh, sense of okay he's over there but he's wanting everybody to look over here where the dancing is and, and they got it so that's my way around that. Um, it, there's not a whole lot you can do except um, just um, understand that it's not about you. Uh, it's about the couple. It's about the songs. That it's about the music they're listening to. Uh, it's not about visual for me. You know, if I'm if I'm not even seen at all, I still have a job to do. You know, so uh, that's how I look at it. Kind of like the Wizard of Oz. Don't pay attention to the man behind the curtain. That's that's yeah. kind of the kind of right. the thing that Trace and I kind of like. And to us, like for us, um, when we run into a situation like that, I, I like to be close to the dance floor. Do I want to be on the dance floor? Sure. But I also don't want to be front and center. Again, that should be the couple, the birthday boy, the birthday girl, the the the, the queen of the quinceanera, the, whoever it is who's your main client, your main focal point is, that who it should be as your, you know, as one focuses to and sees and not – you know, the DJ, the DJ to me is you yeah, had to provide music, sound and some entertainment, but shouldn't be the uh, court gesture and shouldn't be the center of attention. It should be the couple. And again, that's how we look at it. Uh, but everyone does things differently. So I'm going to go down to Mr. Uh, Dixon in the great state of Ohio and ask him if you were put in a corner or you were put off the dance floor or put uh, in an area that, you, you know, you're not up, you know, front and center, do you have a problem with that? Or the couple says, Hey, you know what? That's where I want you. You just live with it and go on. Or do you ask to be moved or what do you do? Um, I usually just go with it. Cause that happened to me with this um, last birthday party. When, when originally when I went to scope up the um, venue, I saw where their dance floor was and we agreed that's where I would be. But when she had her decorators come in, they had the head table there. So they ended up putting me off like in a corner, but not only was it in a corner, there was a big pillar that like divided the room where I had to look around the pillar to see what was on the dance floor. But with that situation, there's nothing I can do because the way that they decorated, that was the only other place that I could be at. But it ended up being where most of the time is pretty much the music. If the music is right, is if that's what they want and you play like a lot of with this crowd they again they were into their urban line dancing kind of stuff and so train line and they had a 
cowboy thing. So anytime I do it in a like a cowboy kind of song, they all got into it. So it, it worked out. The music was right and they got into it. And I took their request, played a lot of like sing along songs and they all had fun and they ate. So it ended up working. But most of the time I tried to be at least somewhere where I can see the dance floor so I know what's going on. I, could, I don't know if you guys ran into it, but I ran into it a few a years ago that it was a, I can't remember what what venue it was, but the DJ does not have direct sight of the dance floor. The DJ is actually in another room and the dance floor is in a separate area. And I can't remember what place it is. I, it's, it's one of the first weddings we did. So this is going back to 2000 and. 2004 i think 2005 um so it, it's it's one of the things that we as a couple uh you know we've seen a lot but i can't remember what it was and I, i'm like oh we should get a camera and put a camera over there it, it was one of the things like you know i was trying to figure out ways to look but if i could see the dance floor i'm sure just like everyone else here uh we want to um make sure people are dancing having fun and watch that dance floor but i'm gonna ask uh jordan jordan for you, if if you or your wife were uh, put back off the dance floor, kind of in a corner area, um, what would you do? Would you just run with it, or would you ask to be moved, or what do you do? <clears throat> I'd probably run with it. Uh, when we've ran into it in the past, um, it's typically the venue, not a couple. Uh, I feel like I'm a couple, especially if they're set on where it is. Uh, the corner doesn't bother me as much as when the venue tries to put me next to the sweetheart table. I don't know if anyone's there. You want that, but, uh, Jordan? Can you uh, turn your mic up a little bit? You're you're a little low. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Sorry, I couldn't hear myself with both of them in. It's weird talking. <laughs> um, but yeah, typically we ran into it with the and the couples, and you can approach the couples. But uh, I've had a few venues try to put me next to the sweetheart table. Like kind of a kitty corner on the dance floor when the sweetheart table is right in the center, and I'd rather be in the corner than right there because it's taking away, like you said, uh, from the couple. Uh, but as long as my speaker placement is where it should be in the room, I really don't have a problem to where I am. I just need it to sound good. Okay. All right. I'm gonna go to Matt, who has a huge presence with lighting and CO2 cannons and sparklers and all the fun stuff. Uh, saw his latest gig log. Nice gig log, sir, as always. Um, what did you, uh, what would you do if you're put off to the side, not directly in the dance floor? So it states in our contract that we have final say where placement is. Um, and if they don't like that, that's tough. Um, so I get to decide, I mean, it's not that we have final say, but like it says we must be near the dance floor. Um, and then it says that they must consult us when making a floor plan. Um, because some of the setups that these couples book are pretty massive and don't work if the DJ is off to the side. They have to be with the DJ in the center right at the edge of the dance floor. Uh, I'm not about to run 100 feet of extension for some CO2 cannons or, or uh, other extension cords for lights or things like that. Now... If it's like the gig log I just posted where there's a stage in the center, obviously we're not going to be on the center of the stage, um, but we do work with the coordinators there to say, hey, we need 30 inches on each side of the stage for these truss towers, and then we do the speakers off to the sides, um, and that works. But um, that's not ideal because that takes way longer to set up like that. I don't really like being off to the side anywhere, uh, so about it honestly because it's uh, you know at the end of the day they're paying for something that we provide and a lot of coordinators think every dj is the same and they're going to pop up a gig bar and two speakers way in the corner and throw the sound right directly at somebody's face who's sitting right there and that's not how we work so um you know it's, that's how i do it um every once in a while i'll get one where it's like they try to put you in the corner and i show up with all my gear and they're like uh i guess you're not gonna fit there and i'm like yeah, you know, I tried to tell you that. So <laughs> uh, that usually works. So that's uh, 
that's what I do. Uh, but we have, we've been pretty lucky. I mean, we've had a lot of big packages. The one we did on Saturday, we were supposed to be, the dance floor was supposed to be in a different area, but because of all the rain, they swapped the whole floor plan and put us back front and center of the dance floor, which I think looked a hundred times better. And um, yeah. Okay. So, DJ Bradley, what about you? Mm -hmm. What do you do if you're a put off center? Go off to the side, Not happening. Corner. Not happy? It won't happen. I'm, I won't let it happen. I part the first thing I, I do when I talk to a couple, like the one I was just messaging now, they granted it's at celebrations, it's in center court. So I'm like, there, we already talked about where the booth is going to be. So move point. But I'm real clear that first off, I need to be within a couple of feet of the dance floor, if not directly on top of it for starters. <clears throat> and then I will talk to coordinator, venue, and couple to let them know how much space I actually need based on what they want. And when it comes to setting up in a corner, yeah, I'll do it if I absolutely have to. But when, like I, like Matt just said, if I show up and they see how much gear they've actually asked of me, it's not going to fit in the corner. And at Rustic, that one crummy, crummy venue that I had an issue with and how I prevent, you know, prevent all of this from generally happening is advancing everything with everyone I'm working with. So they know all of what I'm going to need before I show up again, rustic occasions up in loyal Wisconsin, advanced everything and turned out that the lady on the phone didn't know her head from her butt. So I try to keep all of that in mind before I get there. And I've never had a problem where I've been completely away from the dance floor. It's never happened. The only times, like, at Cargill Room, they may occasionally put the dance floor in the center of the room and put the head table, like a king's table, in the middle of the dance floor. When they do that, I'll set my booth up to the side of the dance floor, but I'll put my two speakers on the edges of the dance floor, my lights, you know, directly on the side of that, so it all looks uniform, and I'm just a little off-center, which I'm okay with, not preferable, but... I, you know, make sure and preventively make, prevent anything that can happen like that. Okay. Man, that's, again, different, different ideas, different thoughts. And that's, that's, you know, one reason why I asked because I, I see here, I have my third wedding coming up this uh, Monday and I'm the, the kind of same thing stuck in a corner. Uh, that's facility says, Hey, this is where we put you guys at. This is where the DJ goes. And, it's one of the things I have a couple of tables in front of me for the actual dance floor. So it, it's, it is what it is. Uh, I'm like, okay, whatever. The main th important part is that, uh, you know, I, I haven't been to this facility before. Um, had to see what's going on, but my first wedding of the year, I was off to the side away from the dance floor. I, my second wedding this past weekend off, off the dance floor, I had table, you know, I had uh, a table in front of me. Um, you know, so it was it was very unique, but there's uh, some places it's worse than others, but it is what it is a lot of times. The more important thing is that I can see the dance floor. That to me is a big thing. So I know you guys are talking in the chat about some stuff. Uh, Adrian E., I see you. Mikey Mike, welcome, welcome, welcome from uh, Northeastern Pennsylvania. Uh, Mike said he did a wedding um, and the bride and groom were stuck in a corner uh, next to the in and out of the uh, kitchen. Ouch. Um that's kind of suck. Uh, that sucks a lot. <laughs> uh, DJ Cool Thing is here. And then um, uh, Mike posed a question, and I'm going to pose this to the uh, group. Who do you th uh, who thinks that Beyonce's song will be a wedding hit this year? So I take it her uh, big uh, hit that she has going on. Um, cool Thing th says, I think since almost everyone likes the that song, I uh, Dwayne has said that uh, Beyonce's song is starting to pick up here in Cleveland because someone created <coughs> a TikTok line dance to it. I guess, uh, Dwayne, you got to teach us that TikTok line dance because uh, I didn't know there was a line dance to it now, but I guess there is. So, And that's, uh, that's one of the uh, cool things. So, um, Jeff, Beyonce's song. Are you uh, are you excited about it? Are you hearing more and more people asking about it? Are you playing it more often? Um, 
not really. Um, I haven't had any requests for it uh, specifically. Uh, I don't know. I think it's going to kind of burn out. I think there's some other uh, songs on that album that will start uh, hitting pretty soon. Um, that that song kind of, yeah, I mean, the TikTok dance is it's already old. I mean, it's, you know, it's it's weeks old now. So uh, I, I don't think it'll it'll last too much longer. Uh, but I mean, I've got it. I'll play it. Um, but, um, you know, it depends on the crowd and it depends on, as we've discussed before, it depends on the clientele uh, for the event. Um, yeah, you know, uh, several events or several several of the uh, weddings that I have done recently are very country. And I think they would view that as, uh, you know, so, somebody who's trying to be country that it's not. Um, yeah, so, but, but, you know, then again, you've got people, you know, that like, uh, Jelly Roll who is country and is, uh, is crossing over into top 40, uh, you know, uh, Morgan Wallen, same, same thing, but they're, they're, even though they're crossing over into top 40, they're playing their own music. Yeah. They're not playing out of their genre. So, um, so I think, uh, I think the hardcores will view it as, you know, it, it's, it's somebody's trying to cross over into, uh, or, or out of their lane, I, I think is what I've heard. Um, but yeah, I, 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 I applaud her for, for doing it. I think it's a great stroke of genius. You know, it's, um, you know, um, I, I've heard several rumors why she did it. Uh, we'll never know that until she answers that, but, uh, yeah, it's, it's a good song. It's got a good hook to it. Um, and actually a local, um, uh, lady in Greensboro here, uh, Rihanna Giddens, 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 um, she played the banjo at the beginning of that. So, and, um, so yeah, it's, um, got some local ties. There you go. See, it has, uh, that flavor there. And again, it's, it's, it's a, seems to be a popular song. I've yet anyone to request at any of my weddings so far I've had, but yet the uh, season's still young. So I will, I will see, uh, I have it and I will play it. Um, uh, and again, I, I, I applaud her for doing a, a kind of a, doing a crossover and, you know, she's a talented woman and she has some, uh, a lot of great music. And that's the thing is that, uh, it, it's always interesting to see what songs at the beginning of the year or middle of the year that works really great and has long legs and stays around versus songs that come in and go out very quickly. And, you know, the, the thing with TikTok, TikTok is, so in and out very quickly with stuff. Uh, by the time everyone else knows what's going on, TikTok's already done over with it, but everyone else is just catching up to it. So it's, it could be a hard thing. Uh, Matt, what about you? Have you, uh, are you doing Texas Hold'em down there or are you, uh, are no one's requesting it or anything? Or I've played it once. Uh, it was requested once, but uh, it was towards the end of the night and uh, nobody was really there. So I played it, but I don't know. Um, I like it. I think it's got a good vibe to it. And if you got a good system, it's got a good bass, uh, bass heavy uh, beat. So I don't know. Um, I personally don't like Beyonce at all. Um, I will never play um, Crazy in Love, uh, Single Ladies, um, or any Beyonce. Like, I don't, those songs are all lame anyway, but. Um, I don't play any of those by choice. Uh, so if they request it, sure. But I've never been a Beyonce fan. I don't think her music's that good. Um, I think Alicia Keys is better if you want to compare black female artists with great voices. But uh, I don't know. I, I like I, I like that it's like a country crossover, though, because I loved when Lil Nas X came out with all his stuff. I'm a huge Lil Nas X fan. So uh, what he does now, he's really more just hip hop, but uh, still has a little... I don't know. It's it's good. It's well produced. I don't really like anything else on the album. I listen to it, but uh, I like to see music kind of cross over. It's it's good to have these kind of genre bending artists that really get both vibes because it lets you test the waters. Like I don't I don't unlike Jeff. I don't do country weddings. I have a big country playlist, but uh, very rarely do I get couples that want country, and I. I'm not a country fan anymore. I used to be. I used to go to stagecoach every year. I used to line dance every week, but now I just look at it and I'm like, line dancing is so stupid. Like, <laughs> but 
I don't well, know. Maybe a lot, a lot of people I'm... like it, and my wedding Saturday night, I had people, know. you know, boots going to boogie, and people were out there having fun, you know. So it's 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 like anything I'm in, else. I'm in Orange. I'm in Orange County. There's tons of uh, tons of girls that that go to Stagecoach, and uh, with they just opened a Bass Pro Shops here in Irvine, which is you know Irvine, if you ever know, is a very rich area of uh, culture, but country is not part of that culture. It's not conservative at all. Um, like there, there's no uh yeah and somebody somebody posted uh like the grand opening it went viral on instagram like people sharing it oh look it's open and some guy commented oh great now they have some because <laughs> uh, it's, it's okay. such well, a we don't talk about politics a, here we don't uh, talk about stuff like uh, that uh, but that and, just shows you like we don't that area is not country or or that, that kind of style But and then I, I like I like the Beyonce. Okay, you're a fan of it, Dwayne. I know you said you saw a TikTok. There is a dance to it. Mm -hmm. Um, what do you what do you uh, think about uh, about Beyonce's uh, song? I played it because it was uh, requested, and then also the party was a 60th rodeo birthday party. So that since it was new, that worked fine. But with that song, that sounds like a song that I might play as a um, transitional song if I'm trying to go from like hip hop or R&B into um, country or vice versa. But it's like I had to sandwich that in between a good song and then come out with a a, a good follow up. I, I wouldn't see me like playing it as that, you know, that lower banger. But the thing is, you know, again, like uh, Jeff hit it on the head, it depends on your crowd, what's going on. Is it a younger crowd? Is it an older crowd? You know, what kind of country are they into? Are they more purist? Or do they mind a little bit more newer country? I've had people who uh, like older country, and they call the newer country artists stadium country. Because it's, you know, you go to the stadiums and see them versus going to a bar or, or hearing on a, a jukebox. So, you know, it, it's... It's one of the things that you have to know your clientele and talk to your clientele about. But I think that having it around is a great thing. So speaking of a thing, I know uh, we have two DJs here, actually three DJs here, who do stuff at uh, bars and clubs. But I'm going to ask uh, our youngest DJ here, Tommy. Uh, Tommy, uh, what about you? Do you, are, you uh, are you getting hits for the uh, the song from uh, Beyonce for uh, Texas Hold'em or anything off her new album? Or... Are you just not seeing that uh, kind of request at your uh, places? Uh, I not really. I think I got the request once. Uh, it's the type of song that I would play like more as like an opener song, like uh, maybe in like that first hour when I'm kind of warming things up. Uh, like when I played it, I think I've played it a couple times, and that's usually when I play it. Uh, I could even see myself maybe even playing that during like dinner or something at a wedding just to kind of have like some upbeat vibes. And then uh, I, I just don't really see it as something I'd play during like a peak hour set um, during either a wedding or at the bar. Okay. And then uh, Jordan, what about you? What do you, what do you think of Texas Hold'em? Do you, do you, are you getting requests for it? Are you get are you playing it or? I have not received one request for that. I honestly until you guys said the title, I wasn't sure what song you were talking about. The last two albums by her are, I'm going to call it acquired taste, but uh, I, I don't see them as really songs that you would, yeah, drop in a set that would keep people dancing. Um, maybe, yeah, like uh, Tommy said, maybe during dinner or something, but uh, I just don't like her last two albums, so I don't even think to play it. And that's the thing is that, again, you have to know your crowd. You know, there's people who come up to you and are like, I love this fill-in-blank here group or artist or singer, and I want to have lots of stuff from them. But does it translate to everyone else there? Now, they may have a few other friends that love said artists. Does it translate well to the dance floor? It could or could not, depending on the song. And, again, if it's not a big hit, and Beyonce's got a lot of songs. She has a very large library. But again, there's there's stuff you gotta look at, and I, I keep going back what Jeff said. You gotta know your crowd. Gotta know what you're watch what you're going on and what's happening. Bradley, what about you? Because you straddle both uh, events and bar. Are you getting it? Are you getting hits for it at the bar or at the uh, weddings or what? So I'm definitely playing it at my college club gigs. I am. I'm quick mixing it. You're getting a verse and a chorus, and I'm done with it because I, I just 
it, it's it's a three and a half minute song, and if you play verse two, people are already bored. So, and Tommy did put it best. It's an opener. Uh, I can't see making it past the first ninety minutes of the night and playing that song. Whereas, you know, uh, Jordan Yuta said, you know, her last two albums, I'm still playing "Break Your uh, Break My Soul." That that, that that's, that's got exception. a little bump to it. That's the only song off the last one that's got some bump to it. But when it comes to you know, like the newer stuff, I'm. Thanks to TikTok and people's attention spans, you get two or three weeks with a song before you're done with it. And honestly, the better song that's in the same BPM right now is uh, Austin from Dasha. Song has kind of got that same feel, that same bump, but it's a little bit more, it's a little bit less refined in its production. And I'm not going to lie, that thing is killing it with the college kids right now. Of the two, and if you haven't checked, heard it, Go check it out. But I could see myself throwing Austin from Dasha in, even though the content may not be perfect for a wedding. But, you know, not, you know, dirty or anything. But I could see me myself using that before I'm using uh, Beyonce's uh, Texas Hold'em in a landslide. But now Matt also said it's got a good, you know, a good beat. It's got the good bump to it. But it's a social hour at a wedding set. Maybe... Maybe if I'm feeling saucy and I have a group that wants a lot of new music at a wedding, I can throw it in around Bruno and uh, Uptown Funk and dance with somebody. You know, somewhere we're right in that 110, 120 BPM range before I start pushing harder, and it might work. But, but I don't think it's going to last more than another few weeks before people don't care. Okay. And then, you know, it, it's it's always a question of, like everyone is saying, is all question of what you're getting requested, who's requesting what, and what's transmitting to the dance floor. So, I have, for you guys out there watching on YouTube, here's something for you. Um, when uh, Matt says a, a bad word, I have a uh, block for it, and I have unique block for it, and it goes back to his gig logs. If you know what that is, and Matt, I, I, I think, you, I know if you saw the last episode, or, <laughs> Um, <laughs> it is uh Matt's signature sound he loves. I had that for when he says a naughty <laughs> word, so I want you to do me a favor. I did block it out, a uh, bad word, not this last episode, but the episode beforehand because he said a bad word. I want you to put it down uh, in the chat down below what I hit that Matt loves to hit as well, but to block him from saying a bad word. So I, I wanted to ask you guys about that. And, and I want to put it here as a little Easter egg for people who are not fast forwarding and jumping all over the place for the show, because I see what people watch. I see how many hours or minutes people uh, play this show. And I want to give little Easter eggs for those people who are listening all the way through. So do me a favor, put down below in here that uh, Matt loves x audio or sound and that's his uh that is basically his uh bleep button for when he says a naughty word <laughs> so let's go on to the next thing on here uh when you have a event you're doing and you know it's a long event we're there usually a few hours prior to a few, uh, you know a half hour for four minutes after for teardown a few hours prior to for setup and we're going through everything. Uh, we like to have something to eat or drink. And one of the things I know some people do request the facility or the couple or the person throwing the event to put them in the food line and have them have food. If you had to um, be self-sufficient and what I mean by that if you if if you know the food there, like for me, like I'm very picky, so I'm a picky fat guy. What can I say? Um, or I know <laughs> that the bar's not gonna open to get water or something to drink. You know, I can't get a, uh, some pop or whatever. And yeah, we say pop here in Chicago, not soda, like you guys or Coke. Soda. It's not soda. It's pop. Uh, anyways, uh, wow. if if uh, what do you call sparkling water? Carbonated water. RC. Sparkling water. R RC. There you, you go. <laughs> we call that, like, I call that soda water. Yeah, we can yeah, say I soda water, seltzer water. But um, 
what do you do to keep, you know, keep yourself hydrated and what do you keep yourself, you know, basically fed? And like I've said before, I usually have some, you know, some power bars, some protein bars, and we have uh, off Amazon, the big, huge uh, stainless steel, like Stanley's, they're sealed up with water. I add a little flavor to it with uh, those little me me uh, Milos. But um, what uh, what do you guys usually do? So I'm going to start with uh, with Tommy here in this one. Is uh, when you are at a gig and you know that the food, let's say it's a food that you either hate or you're allergic to, or it's stuff that is they're not they don't count you in because the facility's like, no, you're not part of it. And you know the bar is not open. Do you bring your own water? Do you bring your own snacks? Do you bring anything with you to satisfy the hunger so you can walk through it? Do you wait till the late at night and wind up at Burger King or McDonald's or whatever and get a Whopper or a Big Mac or whatever? Steal uh, the bar. Uh, what's up? So Tommy steals all the bar peanuts. <laughs> bar yeah. peanuts. Yeah. I mean, as for like drinks, like I I always bring a cooler uh, with like water. And stuff just because like sometimes it's hard to even get to the bar like even if it's open for uh anybody yep. like i just think it's easier to just have a cooler behind the dj booth and me and any staff that's with me like just like here take a bottle <coughs> and then you can use that um i don't usually bring food with me i mean i'm not picky uh when i'm doing an event like a wedding or something where there's like food being served uh that's more than just like a small private event i usually clarify ahead of time that i'm like included with that meal um but like i can usually get through a gig if i'm hungry but it's more if you're thirsty you need to hydrate uh so i always bring water with me and just a cooler so you uh you don't bring a monster or a red bull or uh, 50 red bulls like matt nah, does no nah, i don't drink i don't drink those energy drinks i i try to stay away from those <laughs> well you're you still young I know one person here drinks energy drinks, but we'll get to them in a little bit. <laughs> nope. It's been all three, three months and two days, and I haven't touched one. Really? We'll talk about that in a second. But nope. the one thing I've always noticed about, because uh, I like I like my monster, I guess, zero. Uh, but I don't take it, take it for it. Yeah, I don't take it when I go to a wedding because the fact that, I don't know about you guys, but I have to use a little boys' room a lot more drinking. It's like, it makes me, it actually dehydrates me, drowns some fluid out of me. So I'm trying to put fluid into me, you know, drinking water. Um, and we have, you know, our Stanley's or our, our jugs that uh, we have full ice water. And I don't want to get rid of it that quickly because between uh, moving around, stuff like that. And I just don't want to be dehydrated and get a cramp when you're trying to DJ or trying to do something. You move a cable and obviously you get a cramp because you're dehydrated. That's not fun. So. I'm going to go over to uh, Brentley, uh, who had drink monsters and other energy drinks. Who said he's not drinking energy drink, but uh, you're still drinking uh, Diet Coke, right? I'll I'll start to drink, drink a couple soda pops today, but that's about it. I'm not trying. I have my two cups of coffee in the morning. Get up, you know, and later in the afternoon now, I'll have a couple sodas throughout the course of a day. But I'm not. I'm not trying to stay jacked for all my sets anymore, and I definitely noticed a little change in how it was until I kind of got used to it a month in that my, I was feeling a little bit like less pumpy, so to speak when I was mixing and I didn't feel like I had the right vibe in my own personal being to push what I was pushing. So it took like a month to get over that. And now I'm, it's back to normal. At least the pictures of my gig uh, club gigs are showing up, but yeah, when it comes to getting food and drink, like at club gigs, like stadium view, for example, or a beer house. Now that you know, if I will stock up at the bar before the gig starts. I will go up there and be like, "Yo, can I get three or four carbless for the booth? A couple bottles of water, and while I'm here, give me a rumpy so I can start the night right." Okay, good. But if I'm at a wedding, uh, first off, you know, because my business partner has called me a diva or a princess, and he's probably right because all the venues I'm at, I'm checking in with them, go, you know, knowing what you know what the meal is. 94% of my couples at, you know, one of the five venues I'm usually at are asking me what I'd like for my main course. And here's what your, your, your apps and all this are for the day. So I'm getting it all spelled out for me before I even show up. But I do make sure that uh, for weddings, I'll bring a few bottles of water. And now it's just going to be soda and probably a lot more water this summer. Don't know how weddings are going to go with 12 plus hour days 
and not getting jacked on, you know, energy drinks. But, and that might change as soon as I have, what, four in a row the second week of June, which is just going to devastate me. So I might, by Sunday or Monday, be chugging the energy drinks. But I generally try to make sure I have enough in the booth with me. And the weddings I'm at, not to be a, you know, douche, but I generally won't t- pick up a wedding where I'm not, I know I'm not going to get fed. Period. It's I'm there for 12 plus hours in a day. You better feed me. I mean, or I'm going to have to take off and go somewhere or have something delivered during your wedding. Because, I, 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 you know, I, I've actually told Tracy a couple of times, like, I may actually order a pizza, you know, have a pizza delivered. Got all the apps on your phone. You pick your phone up. You got all the apps, Uber Eats and stuff like that. Like, hey, order a pizza or something like that. And she goes, don't you dare. Uh, <laughs> I always tease her about but, that. But yeah, the, the, the venues I'm at primarily, food's included and they make sure I'm fed every time. Knock on wood. So, and I guess that's where my focus lies based on price point and what I'm doing, that those are the venues I really want to be in. And then the one thing like with me also is that, uh, again, I'm picky, plus I can't have alcohol, so I'm allergic to alcohol. So a lot of the uh, the sauces have alcohol in it, so I can't have it. So it's like, yeah. Um, so I'm going to ask you real quick, quickly here, just real quick, hands only, before we continue on. I'm going to jump this question real quickly. If you had choice between an entree and chicken fingers, who here would take chicken fingers because they're easy to eat and get out of the way? And all right. Oh, well, not chill. Yeah. Hey, I, I mean, it depends where your fingers. You guys must be DJing at some crappy venues then because uh, I, I have in our contract that we must be fed the same food as the guests. And it is in bold and it is underlined. And it works. Um, I'm not getting a crappy vendor meal. You're not giving me some sandwich or some prepackaged garbage. Like, I'm getting what the guests are getting. And probably half the time, they actually have a place setting for me. Like, no, I'm, with you. I'm with you on that. But, like, with what Buddy is saying, like, it is, like, a lot easier sometimes than to have three plates on your DJ table and forks yeah, and all that. If you, if you don't have somewhere to eat, yeah. Um, I, I've been through that before where it's, like, there's – no cocktail tables or there's no nowhere to really sit and, and put a plate and eat. That's why I bring uh, my music stand. But, it doubles as my table, so I don't have to leave. I mean, luckily, the, the platters on the Rain 4 are much bigger than my last controller, so I could fit a whole plate <laughs> on them. There, there you go. You put it there, down. There you go. <laughs> what? Man, I should do that on my XZ, too. Make sure it's on there. The plates. The real oh, plates. You know? $600 controller. Like, eh, it's fine. It's, it's built tough, you know? So, uh, Jeff, what I, about I, you, sir? Uh, <laughs> I get dirty. That's my problem. I get dirty. I need to like my my girlfriend says you need to you need to always like because uh, I, I always spill food on myself somewhere. So I usually have a jacket in the car just in case. I always have a Tide pen with me too. Uh, but like sometimes you know if it's barbecue or it's uh, tacos and they're juicy and I bite into it and a little gets on my clothes, like you know. That's where, that, that's where I'm like, damn. So, consider what has been better. So, Jeff, what about you? What do you do for if you had to be self sufficient? Do you bring bottles of water with you? Bring a Stanley? Stop at Starbucks? I've got a uh, little playmate from the 80s that I uh, pack uh, some uh, one little uh, ice pack in. And um, usually, a, a standard gig, I'll bring a, um, a Gatorade, a water. And it depends if it's, if I need the energy, I'll uh, throw in either a um, uh, Mountain Dew or a Diet Coke, whatever the wife has bought uh, this week. <laughs> you know, I don't drink much of those. The only one I'm DJing. But uh, uh, one thing that really helps me, um, I, I always have a, a um, pack of icebreakers or Tic Tacs that I can just munch on. Uh, keeps, keeps your breath fresh and uh, gives you a little spike of energy, the uh, spearmint or whatever it is in it uh as far as food um if i know i'm gonna get fed then you know i'll I'll take whatever they got that's fine i hate eating at the dj table at my booth um so yeah (laughs) chicken fingers might be a better choice there but uh but i like to dip my chicken fingers in a lot of ketchup so that's kind of messy but um you can still take a fork it's just like a three-hour gig if it's a like this weekend, they're going to feed me chicken, you know, for the um, for the prom, you know, all the 
every, every, all the, I guess the administrators and everybody, you know, eat before the event. So they feed me. Um, but it, it's three hours. If, the, if the, I weren't eating for that, I would eat something before I go. And I usually try not to eat anything during the show, uh, during a gig. Um, but if I need it, you know, sometimes I, I have been known to throw a pack of uh, like cheese crackers and and just, you know, just nibble on those throughout the evening. So, but yeah, I, I, I try to, I try not to make it you know, too obvious that I'm eating, you know, at, at the DJ booth. Yep. And that, that's a hard thing. I, this past weekend, the, um, I want to say what Uncle Bob's uh, barbecue, great stuff. They had uh, pulled pork and then they had a uh, whole chicken breasts and trying to, you know, pull the meat off the bone and you have plastic utensils. And then I'm trying to eat on a, uh, I have my little toolbox next to me, the Max toolbox. Uh, it's now um, Craftsman, but it's basically, you know, a foot, a foot and a half deep and two feet wide, uh, two and a half feet wide, and you're trying to balance a plate on there, trying to cut a knife fork. Not fun. So, yeah, chicken fingers are always the best way. Jordan, what about you? Chicken fingers? Or you uh, you want to sit down and eat a real meal? Or do you want to do snacks? Or what do you do to uh, be self-sufficient for a gig? Uh, a lot of times we bring a full lunch, like a lunch you would bring to your day job. I'm sandwich, apple, waters. I do bring like a thermos or such thing like a kind of like a stanley but it's a a youtuber's brand but just with water found that i try to drink a lot of water because i don't because I, I i'm a mountain dew guy myself so i just end up drinking mountain dew and getting all crampy and yeah i notice when you drink water you're a lot less tired too so uh but as far as like vendor meals um i'm not too picky on it i honestly do not like to sit down at a table just because like even with auto mode and stuff, sometimes like you got to adjust the gain or, you know, trim some stuff out or something. And I'm always up and down. And I, especially like this last wedding, they, um, they sat us and like part of the bridal party was at the table. And I just like, I feel awkward getting up and down. So we just kind of hit out in the corner and look at this, but the meals were great, but yeah, I'm not, a big stickler on the vendor meals. It's great to get one, but um, sometimes I don't even have time because we're doing other stuff and running around, making sure everything's perfect. So, but at a bar, I order a pizza before I start, and they'll bring it to me. <laughs> there you go. So, uh, you know, it, it's always interesting. Uh, Mike saying that he was at a wedding last year. They had made to order New York strip with sides, and each plate was three uh, three eighty eight a, uh, a plate. Ah, that's that right there in New York Strip. That that could be uh, very tasty for some people who uh, like Tracy loves New York Strip. That's why I usually get for her to grill on the grill. Uh, usually, uh, I mean, one of, inch thick. one of my favorite wedding venues has a uh, prime rib as one of their offerings for uh, steaks. So you know where I'm going getting every time I'm there. The one and, there was a venue I was very upset I didn't get a meal. I think it's out by you, buddy. Um, it's like farm to table. So like they don't plant the seeds until you book the wedding. And oh, they uh, weren't. Yeah, they in weren't St. Charles. Out yes, plates. I know what you're talking about. Um, like the, the person who raised the cow was there serving the meat. <laughs> like, man, I want one of those. But yeah, they, they weren't giving that out. <laughs> it, it's it's always unique that's why you know we try to be self-sufficient and speaking of a person who is very self-sufficient who has a career in teaching and, and has to deal with school all day and then has to go to a gig uh mr dixon how about you sir how do you uh prepare when you go for a gig you know when you walk in do you have like bottles of water do you have a stanley you stop at starbucks do you have energy bars with you what do you usually do and are you your chicken fingers correct sir or you're not chicken fingers no, I don't do chicken fingers. I got severe food allergies, so I try to be self-sufficient. So I either stop by uh, like Burger King, <laughs> Burger King or something and try to eat before. But then I also try to have like some candy, a Rice Krispie treats or um, the small bottles of either Ocean Spray, Cran Grape or the Grape um, Power Drink, like the Gatorade um, version. 
So I usually have like little snick snacks. Okay. And especially someone like yourself who has allergies and you don't want to have something, uh, you know, happen to you. And I hope it never, ha anything ever happens to you. You're, uh, you're always a, a great man. And I just, uh, when I see a, um, uh, someone with uh, problems with, um, with food, that's one of the things also that a lot of facilities don't reach on ask, do you have any allergies? And that's, I think that's what a lot of couples should be asking when they're doing stuff and they're playing stuff, either for a vendor or for a friend or family saying, Hey, you know what? I can't, I have celiac disease. I can't have gluten, you know, or I have this, or I'm allergic to that. And you'd be surprised how much you could find of that product that somebody may be allergic to in food. You know, some people have peanut allergies. Some people have other allergies. So again, having that kind of allergies, you have to be aware of what you eat. And again, stopping at Burger King, pick up a Whopper, that's never a bad thing, you know, before a gig. Uh, I've done that plenty of times. You know, I know I'm not going to eat the whole night. Get a Whopper on the way going there, driving and eat a Whopper. And, you know, when I get there, you know, I'm like, hey, I'm not going to eat till, you know, either after the gig or, you know, next morning uh, when I wake up. So, but trying to be self-sufficient is always important. And uh, Adrian E says he brings a flask of whiskey, of, of vodka. I'm sorry. I said, I think it was whiskey, a flask of vodka. So he's over taking nips uh, as he's DJing. So by the end of the night, I'm sure that the, the music is just perfect. <laughs> uh, cool thing says. Was, I he the, was he the DJ we were talking about last week? No, he was not. <laughs> he was not the uh, drunk DJ <laughs> coming out because <laughs> if he was, I would grab hold of him and give him a noogie and said, no, you don't do that, Adrian. <laughs> no, Adrian Adrian does not do that. Adrian's laughing. Um, I can't eat my burgers now that I'm getting high I'm getting high cholesterol. Well, again, you have to take care of stuff and you have to see what's going on and eat accordingly, but you can eat, you know, grilled chicken. You know, there's a lot of places that have grilled chicken for a sandwich. You can have a grilled chicken sandwich or other stuff that has lower cholesterol, or you go have a salad. Um, and then and I noticed in uh, Northeastern Pennsylvania, rarely prepare any food with salt. Uh, well, that could be a lot of places that are salt restricted. You know, people have salt restrictions out there. And that's another thing is that, again, that's knowing people who have allergies and stuff. Plus, I think a lot of places under season because they're afraid of people with medical problems and they want to do as wide as possible. So, you know, having some, you know, salt packets in your uh, DJ bag is not a bad thing. Having some ketchup packets. Uh, Jeff said he, you know, has to have ketchup with his, his nuggets or his tenders. I have to, I'm, I'm a barbecue sauce person, but ketchup's also really good too. So I always have a few uh, packs of Heinz and we can very, very easily get them when you go to, uh, Burger King, McDonald's, whatever, have a few packs of uh, ketchup in your uh, bag. Just uh, make sure you don't smack anything down on it because uh, ketchup and computers don't mix really well. And you don't want that on there. That would be uh, a nice sticky mess to deal with when you get out there. But, uh, yeah, this comes to the end of the night, you guys. And then we got through another show. We appreciate it. And we appreciate all of you out there watching tonight. And I can't thank you guys all, especially everyone talking in the chat uh, especially Mike with his uh, New York strip steak. Uh, oh, I got to ask this. Mr. Dixon, New York strip steak, yes or no? Oh, yes. Yeah, yes. No, Jeff. I'm going to do beef. All right. Medium rare or medium? Uh, well done. Well, do well oh, done. <laughs> yeah, well done. Well, everyone likes different things. <laughs> Jeff, New York strip, yes or no? And how do you want it done? Uh, yes, New York Strip and uh, medium rare. All right. DJ Brentley, New York Strip, yes or no, and how is it done? Bloody as hell. Okay, so Still really knowing. rare. <laughs> Matt, Burn the outsides and serve it to me raw on the inside. Uh, I don't do New York Strip. Filet mignon, come on. I'm a man of class. New York oh, Strip is garbage. New York Strip has got more flavor than filet. <laughs> and filet is, is so no, soft, I, you, can, I, you can use a butter have to cut it. I like exactly. I like a more tender cut. Okay, so Real I take it me medium, medium or medium rare. I like medium. Medium. I, I like it to be a little red, but I don't like it to be bleeding. Okay. And then uh Jordan, what about you? Strip or no? And how you want it done? I mean, I like all kinds of steak. Strips are good. Um, I like it uh medium well. Crispy medium. on the outside. Oh, another little... person likes it well done, likes it gray all the way through. On the inside. And then, you know, the A5 Wagyu. 
finally tom oh yeah you want wagyu uh, wagyu steak and you know that like it's what like three four hundred dollars a pound yeah <laughs> he's got some really good taste uh tommy what about you strip steak and how you want it done um definitely and uh I'll do medium medium so cool thing says he's uh with uh matt on that one flame and yon medium rare uh yeah i i could i could see that yeah tracy likes hers medium I'm more of the medium rare side kind of thing with, with steaks and meat, uh, with beef, but, uh, no one wants rare pork or rare chicken. That's not very good. So if you see pink chicken or pink pork, don't eat it there. There you go, kids. There's your lesson for today. Uh, and with that said, uh, Jordan, we're going to have you take it out tonight. Close it out for us. Are you going to have the awkward guy do it? Yeah. He's go ahead and say, I'm going to go tonight. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Uh, have a great week. All right. Appreciate it, guys. Have a good night.